Today I'm going to help you conquer low light photography. I'm going to show you how to avoid grainy pictures, I'm going to show you how to fix grainy pictures, blurry pictures, uh, improper white balance. We're going to go over all the issues that you will usually have when you shoot pictures in low light. So by the end of this video, you should have a better understanding on what to do when you're in a low light situation. I'm going to get out and take some pictures and I'm going to show you how to edit them. But the first thing you have to do is set your expectations properly. You can't expect a picture that was shot in low light to be just as good and just as clean as an image that was shot in the middle of the day. The less light you have, the harder your camera has to work. So set your expectations properly. So without further ado, let's go out and take some pictures. Alright, your first priority is definitely to shoot raw. If you're not shooting raw, then you're not going to have enough information in the picture. Remember that a camera is just a light capturing device. So the less light you have, the less information it can capture. So shooting raw is going to make sure you have as much information as possible to play with. Or most of the things that I'm going to show you is just not going to work. When shooting in low light, you want to make sure you find your priorities. If something has to be a certain way, then you know you can't change that. Like if there's a lot of movement in the shot or something like that, you have to have a high shutter speed or it's just going to be a big blur when you pass by. That's usually the main source and main reason why your pictures are blurry at nighttime or in low light because you don't, because you don't have the shutter speed set high enough. You can't compensate for the shutter speed if there's motion. Same goes with depth of field. If you have a lot of things that need to be in focus, then you can't have a shallow depth of field. So even if the picture is properly exposed, you don't have what you need. So setting your priority for the picture is the first thing you have to do when you're worrying about your settings. So right now, I'm on top of a parking garage and I'm about to take a picture of LSU Stadium and this is gonna be a best case scenario. All right, so this is the scene. And like I said, this is a perfect situation because the stadium isn't moving and i have a tripod so i can get a perfect picture with no issues the only problem i may have run across is if you see the screen in the stadium is kind of changing and stuff like that but we'll make it work the first thing i want to do is set my priorities i want to have a deep depth of field because the stadium is far away and it's pretty large so i don't want to shoot anything real shallow i want nice detail and everything like that so so right now i have my aperture set to f8 and my iso set to 100. Now when you have a scene like this, you always want to expose for the brightest thing in the picture. You have all the rest of this down here going on, but you want to make sure that the brightest area of the picture is properly exposed for and don't really worry about the rest because we're going to bring that up in editing. So since I don't have to worry about shutter speed, I'm going to set the exposure with that. And as you can see, this is a 8 second exposure and the lights on the stadium are just blown out. Everything else is pretty good exposure, but the stadium lights are just completely gone. So like if you see the words inside the stadium, it says Tiger Stadium, um, that says LSU. So I want to still be able to read all those things. If I overexpose and that's blown out, then that's just going to look muddy. So on this picture, I'm just going to keep lowering the exposure until I can get it as bright as possible without overexposing the lights. A little over a second works. So I don't want to touch the camera while I'm taking the picture since it's so long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it on the timer of two second timer so I can press the button and let it be. Now this picture is exactly what I wanted. All the bright areas are nice and clean and because I was on the tripod I was able to have a longer shutter speed and I was able to keep the ISO at 100. Now I have the same settings off the tripod. I'm just going to try to take that same picture handheld and I'm going to hold my hand as steady as I can. And I guarantee that picture is blurry. And just like I said, the picture is blurry. Without the tripod, the shutter speed is just too long for me to hold it steady enough to get a nice clean image. So now I have my shutter speed cranked up to 1 250th of a second and my ISO is on 25,600. So it's extremely high. And I'm gonna take the picture now. Now this picture has a very high ISO and it's very noisy, but it's still clean enough to get a nice sharp image out of it. So I would much rather deal with all this noise than have an image that's blurry and completely unusable. Now for this picture, I shot it handheld and I experimented around with different settings. I tried to get the shutter speed as low as I could without causing any blur. I lowered the aperture some from f8 to f4 and I got the ISO down to 1600. So handheld in these conditions, this was probably the best combination that I can get. Now one of the main reasons why I was able to get the shutter speed down to 1 60th of a second is because the lens I was using is stabilized. You also want to remember the general rule of matching your shutter speed with your focal length when you're shooting handheld. So if you're shooting handheld at 50 millimeters, then you want to make sure your shutter speed is at least 1 over 50 to eliminate the handshake. If you're shooting at a focal length of 300 millimeters, then you want to make sure your shutter speed is at least 1 300th of a second. So the longer the focal range you're shooting at, the harder it is to control the shape. 
Okay, here's an example of a low light shot of a person. And if you look at the settings over here, it was at ISO 2000, at f1.8, at 1 250th of a second. So since it's a person, and there's no way a person can stay perfectly still, and since I can't stay perfectly still, I made sure the shutter speed was high enough to cancel out any movement from both of us. Since it's a portrait of a person, I don't really need a lot of depth of field either, so I shot it at f1.8, and that allowed me to get an ISO of 2000. Just like I said before, I exposed for the brightest area so the lights are not overexposed. Even though he's underexposed kinda, the lights are all nice and clean looking. Here's an example that I exposed for him. And even though he's better exposed, the whole scene is just generally just much too bright. And even if I tone it down some and get it to where the other picture was, if you look at the settings, the ISO level is at 12,800. So this is unnecessarily noisy when I could have just shot it that way in the first place. Now here's another example, and I see a lot of people make this mistake. If you look at the ISO level, it's at 100. And people always try to get the ISO level as low as they can because they're afraid of the noise. So because I have the ISO level at 100, the shutter speed is 1 13th of a second. And the exposure is just right, and it's a very clean image. But since the shutter speed was so low, now you have motion blur. It might not be obvious at first, but if I go back to the picture that I shot at 1 250th of a second with the ISO at 2000, let's zoom in on the eye and you can see all the detail in the skin. It's all crisp. Now, if I go to the picture that's at ISO 100, now we're missing tons of detail. Even though it's cleaner, it's nowhere near as detailed. So just because your ISO is going to be lower, that's not necessarily a good thing. Now, noise is, yes, it's much cleaner than the other picture is. There's a lot more noise in this image, but this image is a much better image than this one. This image is very clean, but also very soft. And that's directly because of the shutter speed. It's just too low. He's moving, I'm moving, and you're naturally just gonna have a little movement in the shot. And that sucks away all of the detail that you could have got. So I'm gonna edit this picture and I'm gonna edit this picture from the stadium. This is the one that was on the tripod at ISO 100 at F8 and 1.3 seconds. Now, since we're gonna be editing this picture, I can go ahead and point out another mistake that a lot of people make. They look at this picture and they say, okay, this is too orange. So they go to the orange and they try to turn down the saturation of the orange or they try to change the, the tone of it, try to brighten it up some. And the first thing you need to do is fix the white balance. The white balance is what really gonna bring this picture back to life. Now watch how everything magically comes back once I have the white balance set properly. Now I have proper colors in the trees, the lights are the, are the colors they really were in real life. Skin tones are back to normal. This is how it actually looked. Without the white balance being set right, everything else you do after that is just gonna be wrong. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the shadows up to about right there and I'm gonna take the whites down all the way. Now there aren't really many different colors in this picture. If this was like a neon sign or something, then it probably would have been more dramatic. But since the lights are just white, I'm just gonna add some color by adjusting the highlights and shadows. So what I like to do is I would just turn the saturation all the way up and I will scroll through until I find a color that looks pretty good. And for the shadows, same thing, turn it all the way up. And we're gonna try to find a color that looks pretty good. All right, once I have the two colors, I think that works pretty well. And now we can just turn it down some. Now I'm gonna go down to the calibration settings and I'm gonna turn the red up to about right there. The greens to about right there and the blues the blues to about right here all right so now that's a good starting point now i can go to the actual color adjustments and basically what i usually do is i just slide through all the sliders and see what happens if i go to luminous i can brighten some of the colors all right so that's not looking too bad now let's go clean up some of the noise um you have two options for noise reduction you have luminance which basically controls all the little black and white dots i guess you can see right here and they have color adjustments. So if you turn down the color noise, you can see all the little nasty colors that's going on. So that pretty much cleans that up. So now you don't have all those little colored dots everywhere. Now for the normal noise reduction, I'm gonna look at the eye because I want the eye to be as sharp as possible while turning down as much noise as possible. So if I go all the way up with this, as you can see, it just goes to that. So if we turn it down, just to an acceptable level, because if you go too high, it just starts looking like you smoothed out the skin too much. 
So if we turn off the noise reduction, it looks like that. Turn it back on, it looks like that. So much cleaner, much nicer. And this is a presentable picture even at ISO 2000. Now if we go back to this picture that had the ISO level of 12,800, I'm gonna copy the same settings over to that picture just to see what it does. So let's sync everything and if I go to it, of course it's too bright because it started off too bright. So if we turn it down, so basically same edit, two different outcomes. If we zoom in on this one, it's nowhere near as clean as this image is. And let's see, let's just go ahead and apply it to the other image as well. So sync everything. This image didn't have too bad of an exposure, but it's blurry because we didn't have our shutter speed that was high enough. So if you look at the final result of that and this, this still looks better, even though the ISO level is much higher. I would much rather have a sharp, detailed image that I can actually work with over, over this blurry mess just because I'm trying to keep the image clean. Because at the end of the day, now you have a clean, blurry image with little detail. Now, if we go through the same process with the stadium pictures, first thing I'm gonna do is fix the white balance. I'm gonna lower the highlights just a little bit and raise the shadows all the way up, add a little clarity. And we're gonna raise the exposure a little bit using the curves. I can raise it with the exposure level, but that's gonna bring up the entire exposure. I don't wanna raise the entire exposure. I just wanna raise the mid-tone some. So this is a good way to increase the exposure without raising the exposure of the entire image. And just like last time, I'm gonna to go to the calibration. So on and off, I'm going to work on the shadows and highlights. On and off, real subtle. Now if we go to the hue, same thing I usually do, slide back and forth, see what it affects. Saturation, so with the luminous, I can control some of the brightness. Now after all that's done, I can go ahead and do the noise reduction. Since it's not a person, I don't really have to worry about the smoothing skin out too much, so I can probably use more noise reduction on this picture than I could on the last one. Now I can still go all the way up and completely eliminate the noise. And it doesn't look bad from far away, but up close, it's just, it's too much. So I'm gonna dial it back some so now you have a very clean balanced image now looking at the before and after you can see how far this picture came if you have any further questions then just leave them down in the comment below follow me on instagram leave this video a thumbs up hit the subscribe button and i will see you guys next time